Holy crap, I got to get used to this dang rollerball. <laughs> Heidi ho, everybody, and happy Wackadoodle Wednesday. This is Grammy Mary here in her rocket chair. And uh, yeah, we are. Tonight is going to be about respecting, whether it's respecting yourself or respecting others or the total loss of any kind of understanding of just exactly what respect means, which I'm seeing an awful lot of misunderstandings and misconstruing of that of late. And so, yeah, I'm going to rant and bitch and, and yeah, one of those nights. Okay, wacka, 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 wacka. It is a wackadoodle Wednesday. Let's see. Who is over here on Fakey Book real quick? Let me take a peek. I don't see anybody over there, so that's fine. Over here on RLM, I see Grimner. I see Bo Diddy, and I also see the lovely Miri B. How are you guys doing today? I hope you're having an absolutely splendiferous day. And over here in the RLM, we'll just start right at the top because, you know, there's a missionary man. Just a sec. I need a drink of my beverage. Mm -mm -mm. Don't think what? Don't think Spreaker actually works from Twitter? Ah. Well, sweetheart, I turned my mic up. Is that better? I don't know what the hell the deal is. In any case, um, you can play me for Twitter. Well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to quit reading the chat, and I'm going to say, hey, Asmo, my missionary man, how you doing, darling? I hope you're having an absolutely splendiferous day, although I'm sure you're probably napping right about now. Don't you work graveyard shift, hon? I also see Barman is here, who is the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. And looky there, Cowboy Tech is following right closely behind him. And hey, Cowboy, I hope you're hearing an absolutely wonderful voice this evening. Although I'm a bit, it's been breezy out here, which means it's blowing up the dust. And it's also blowing up the pollen, which means I've been sneezing my brains out. And I didn't really have that many left to start with. <laughs> Moosey, that is just exactly how you spell splendiferous. <laughs> okay, I also see the one, the only, the birthday boy for today. And wow, I really did not realize that I was that much older than you, Grim. But that's okay. Um, let's see. It's all good? Yeah, I turned my. I have to turn my volume up after the song is done playing, because I really don't want to blast your guys' ears out with the song. Although, you know, if you wish to have them blasted out, I could do that, but then it would also blast mine out because I'm wearing headphones and I'm already deaf. Because <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> okay, I'm not old, but what I've got, I have used quite well. In any case, moving along, birthday boy, hey, Grim, how you doing? And yeah, you ain't getting off that easy. I will, uh, yeah, I'll be getting you here in just a little bit. I also see the lovely Moose Girl is here. How you doing this evening, sweetheart? How was the ball games over the weekend? I haven't really had time to uh, or been able to pay attention to the chat because, well, shit, freaking internet at work. Uh, oh, well. I also see the lovely Kate is here. Hey there, woman. How are you doing? I hope you are not cooking down there in the great state of Texas. It's been very nice up here today, temperature-wise. The wind could cut down just a skosh. I think Oklahoma needs to stop sucking or Nebraska needs to stop blowing one way or t'other. Ah, let's see. Who else is here? Trust no one is here. And I trust everyone to behave exactly, exactly how their base mentality is. You know, if you really pay attention to people, you know, and watch their actions, watch their words and deeds, you can always trust them to behave exactly how their base moral code is. Yeah, because they always sink to their lowest level. 
Yes, I do. Um, yes, I am older than you, Grim. That means I am your elder. <laughs> okay, I also see Chalcedony is here, as well as the lovely Chloe. Hey, woman, how you doing? Don't see you really chatting, so I don't know if you're here or if you're just logged in. I also see IB Don C is here as well as IB Don C work. And looky there, Java, 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 Java Doctor 2, the new and improved version. How you doing? Um, oh, they won both games. Woohoo! Oh, that's sweet, Moosey. How awesome. Zach's team is number one seed. Woo woo! Now, why is it number one seed? Is that like if you plant them? then they will grow instead of it being number one seat, which if they're sitting on their ass and how in the hell did they get? Never mind. Moving along. Wanna taco. Wee. You know what? I am going to have me some um, oriental noodles and stir fry stuff after I get done on the radio. Cause yeah, I'm running a little behind. I know that shocks you. <laughs> But I am. Actually, I was out um, playing in the garden, watering, all that fun stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. P. Bunyan is here. Hey, sweetheart. How you doing? Sent off an email to the permaculture show guy about your... Oh, sweet. That was awesome, P. Bunyan. Thank you very much. I also see Rob Works is here. Hey, dude. Where's the bubbler? Huh? I don't know. And looky, Beth A is here. And I think Beth A has some company. And, uh, oh, Chloe, you're not here? Okay. <laughs> you're kind of like me. Oh, Chloe left. Damn it. Um, okay. You can hear me in three rooms. Okay. <laughs> That's a good thing. I think, maybe, I don't know. Happy birthday a day late, Miss Beth A., although I did tell you happy birthday yesterday as well. But again, this is a repeat of good news because, you know, sometimes you just plain have to peat and repeat good news. I also see, hey, looky there, I'm here. Hot diggity dog. Ain't that a surprise? And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the lovely lady from down under, Miss Mary B. How you doing, sweetheart? I hope you're having an absolutely awesome day. It's Thursday for you, isn't it? I'm thinking. I'm. Don't make me think too hard because, wow. Although my headphones are on, so the smoke won't. So I'll probably have trouble reading later because, yeah, that smoke will cloud the back of my eyes. and <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Oh, Grimmy, should I sing to you now or should I wait till later? <laughs> I don't know if I could really call that singing to you. I'm thinking it's more of an at you kind of thing, and I don't know that you necessarily want me to go there. Whee! Because I've heard myself sing. <laughs> it's like, damn, somebody needs to give me a bucket for over my head. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, let's see. Where do I want to go first? Yeah, this evening is going to be one of those nights where, um, you know, I've I've noticed and I've been talking with um, classmates of Joey and some other kids that went to school with him, and uh, we've all pretty much decided that it's a total lack of respect um, that's been going on in this world, and it totally sucks. People don't realize that uh, you can demand respect. You can expect. <laughs> oh, Grim, just for that, I should. <laughs> you and P. Bunyan. Me, 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 me. <laughs> No, I won't do that. I won't inflict that on you. Right now, at least. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I really do respect you, Grim. And I really don't want to inflict that kind of trauma on you. 
but I, I probably do it anyway just because I can. Although I haven't decided what voice I wish to use just yet, so you'll just have to wait. Oh, hey, you know what, Mary B? That's right. You know, maybe if the two of us get together and sing, our two off keys will make an on key because sometimes two negatives make positive. Don't you know? So, <laughs> I can string a line of shit with the best of them. <laughs> oh, man. And speaking of stringing a line of shit, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Where do we want to go? Yeah. Um, there's an awful lot of shit that's been strung out there of late. Uh... And I think I'm just going to, which, by the way, and anybody that notice uh, when I share things on Twitter, I do put the uh, hashtag justice for Joey on there because still we are getting the silent treatment on this shit. Even the uh, big TV stations, which for Kansas is Wichita, um, is getting the silent treatment on this shit. And they've had crews trying to get information they've been making phone calls every day and still not getting any kind of answers which ah oh, i know you're all shocked by that and one of the main things is <clears throat> they although they did finally admit that uh, yes he may have been autistic but no they still are not admitting that he was unarmed assholes which there seems to be an awful lot of that going around lately have you noticed that you know deaf individuals that are unarmed that get shot you know and it's one shot gets fired it's like wow you can't even shoot to wound to keep them from moving towards you you have to shoot to kill right off the bat huh and that goes right back to that whole respect thing yeah because they have no respect for any life other than their own, which pretty much means that they don't even really respect themselves. You And that's one of the reasons why I chose the song that I chose to start out this evening. Because if you don't truly respect yourself, you cannot respect others. Because you don't understand the whole concept of it. You know, and these people that are going out demanding that you respect them because they have a shiny little badge or because they have a certain position or what have you, demanding respect does nothing. And I read an article, uh, an op-ed thing uh, that was the day after um, Joey was shot. Um, yes, as a matter of fact, um, I think there is P. Bunyan. Let me look and see here. There's a little, a little blurb, um, and there's also, here he is. Here's Joey. Um, let's see. Hi, UK Oliver. How you doing, sweetheart? Welcome aboard. Um, Would, if I sounded like Allison Krauss, no, I don't sound like Allison Krauss, hon. Just can't do that. <laughs> Wee, P. Bunyan got a tractor. Woohoo. Okay, uh, back to, yeah, where was I? Oh, yeah, respecting. Um, you know, there's so many people out there that seem to think that you can give respect to others or that you can demand respect from others. And like I was saying, that op-ed piece, uh, the gal put forth that she thought that all of this occurred because of fear. And fear is a result. Um, did I know Joey? Yes, Moosey. He, um, I knew Joey from kindergarten on. From actually, from yeah, from when he was in kindergarten because he, he graduated with my oldest daughter. So, yeah, I knew Joey. And I know Joey's parents. Um, so, yeah, I knew him. And uh, we had his funeral yesterday. So, that was kind of tough. It, it, oh, man. You know, when you're a person that uh, tends to be a little bit on the sensitive side to other people's feelings, um, <clears throat> 
I believe they call it an empath, which I don't know that I necessarily am empathic, but oh, good Lord, I walked into that church and it was like walking into a wall of sorrow <sighs> that was tinged with frustration and anger. It was, that was a tough, and man, and a Catholic ceremony to boot, so it was an hour and a half long. Whee! Yeah, so, yeah. But, in any case, this gal wrote an op-ed, and she said that she believed that it was because of fear, which Joey was shot right outside of the facility that, um, it's a facility for people that have mental disabilities. It's a kind of a safe place for um for these kids in adult bodies and um yeah and joey was their only son so or their only child too so that makes it triply quadruply i i can't imagine i can't imagine not i don't even want to imagine but um in any case joey had the reason why he kept moving was or kept going was because he was trying to get to his safe place. You know, because autistic people, which I have a nephew that w is autistic, pretty much the way Joey is. So that that was another reason why this pretty much hit me pretty hard because it's like, wow, what if that was Zach? I, I, uh, mm, it would not be pretty. I would be down tap dancing on somebody's head. <laughs> Trust me, I would. But, um... Yeah, um, Joey was in fear because he was easily confused because that is part of autism. Um, any kind of stressful situation sends them into fear mode because they just plain can't cope a lot of times. The officer was in fear mode just because, apparently, or so they are portraying it as, um... I'm thinking that's the way they're trained. I'm thinking that's also why they're being very closed mouthed about it. Because I really do believe that they're training them to shoot first and ask questions later. Um Yeah, it's it's really hard, P. Bunyan, and the and the hardest thing is trying to not become the monster that we are trying to do battle with without actually, you know, having to Yeah. That's the hard part, and and there's some some people out here that it's been tough trying to talk them down. Cause wow, it would be so easy. It would be so easy, but you know you can't take the easy route on this. If for nothing else, out of respect for Joey, because that was one of the wonderful things about him was you know he taught everyone how to accept people um for who they are you know and and he accepted everyone and you could tell that he was accepted by his classmates that that's what was so cool cuz nobody nobody in all the years that they went to school with him nobody ever treated Joey like he had a disability nobody did he was just way cool you know, Joey knew every frickin' dinosaur there was to be known. And, you know, and he could explain in minute detail about every single one of them. Anything that was Joey was fascinated by, he just absorbed all of the information he could like a sponge. And you could, you know, you could tell just by watching him, he was an observer. You know, and you could see he was observing everything. And, um, <clears throat> you know, he, and when he got something, you know, when, when something clicked with him, or if he thought something was funny, you could watch that smile just slowly spread across his face until it was just flat ass from ear to ear. You know, it was absolutely. I mean, he's a what? He was a wonderful kid. He really was, and he did not deserve this. And in some kind of an odd kind of way, I wonder if maybe I don't know. I'm trying to find some kind of reasoning behind this, some kind of something. 
but you know if nothing else maybe it got a lot of people to get together and say "Uh uh-uh no more this is where we draw the line because you know we see this in the news all the time you know we it's in north carolina it's in california it's in new mexico it's in texas it's in kansas it's everywhere you see that someone has been shot and killed by a police officer and they were unarmed they were not posing a threat and yet they lost their life because the officer fallback response was i felt threatened do you feel threatened if your toast pops up out of the toaster prematurely did you just shoot your toaster obviously you feel threatened quite easily therefore you should not have a position where you actually have a loaded weapon if you are that fearful period you know there are entirely too many of these going on and maybe <clears throat> this was something that you know is kind of like dangleberry really 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 got me to where it was like that was my last straw with the whole national political scene it was like done i am done well now this with joey this this is my you know everybody says there's a blue line that they don't cross these officers which i've read i know i've ranted before about this i don't give two flying fucks about your blue line okay because as far as i'm concerned humanity comes before a fucking blue line And so if you are a true human being and you see someone else behave in a totally disrespectful, totally inhumane manner, which is what I believe a lot of these people do because they have no respect for others, which is basically an extension of them not respecting themselves, which is why they go for positions of power, positions of control, which this has morphed into, you know, and... I thought, you know, I was going to write a blog about this and I had more and more shit running through my mind and it's like, good Lord, by the time I get done writing this blog, it would be a freaking book and nobody would want to read it because it's just a book long rant. <laughs> so I'll just do a rant on the radio. But you know, it, it, it used to be, you know, you had your Andy Griffiths, that kind of stuff. And even out here, we had our county sheriff. You know, we still do. You know, the Andy Griffith type, the good old boy, the one that really does not want to have to ever pull his gun for any reason whatsoever. He doesn't even want to pull his taser. You know, he just wants to, okay, now really, and trust me, and He has a son that graduated with my youngest daughter. So, you know, we know each other out here. Everybody does. That's the wonderful thing about these small communities is everybody knows everybody. It's a bad thing because everybody knows everybody and everybody's nose is in everybody else's business or it seems that way. But you get to those bigger communities and it's not like that. And you get to those bigger communities and they hire people that are going to be intimidating you know and and trust me i've had run-ins with the uh law enforcement officers which is what they have morphed into you know it's what carlin said um the more syllables you get to to it the more um the more important or the more it steps away from what it originally started out being You know, started out being peace officers where they would come up and they go, oh, really? Come on. Can't you two just, okay, what did you want? And what did you want? And what did he do to you? Now, can't you two just, okay, here, let's try this. Okay. And, you know, talk it out, reason it out, make you shake hands. And even if you still don't like each other, you had a grudging kind of respect for the guy that stood in the middle and went, really? Come on, you guys. He was a peace officer. He was a he was a diplomat. He was someone that that you know. And there are some still, you know, that tried to get you to solve your own problems. He was just the mediator there, saying, 
you know, if you guys can't settle this shit, someone's going to jail. And if neither one of you, I'll just haul both of your asses off. You know, it's kind of the mentality of a mom or a dad thing where if somebody don't fess up, y'all are going to get punished kind of shit, which <laughs> I grew up with a lot. Um, but, you know, then it went from a peace officer to a police officer, which really wasn't necessarily bad either. Because, you know, you can police the room, you can police the park, which is basically walking around, seeing if anything is out of place. If it is, picking it up and putting it where it belonged, you know, tidying things up, what have you. But not necessarily being aggressive yet, not necessarily being on a control freak power trip yet. It's not the peace officer, which is the the guy in the middle who's trying to maintain some peace and trying to get you to, to come to some kind of agreement. This is the one that steps in and instead of making you police yourself, making you clean up your own mess, they come along and they have a bit of a swagger and they police the area, they pick it up, they tell you, you know, you need, you need, to, they start giving orders instead of saying, how about, they say, you need to, you know, the, the verbiage starts changing just a little bit, the attitude starts changing a little bit, and the respect for others starts going away. With this progression, the respect starts going away. Now, when you get to the law enforcement officer, which this is my opinion only. I mean, if you agree with me, fine. If you don't, fine. My opinion, I've grown rather attached to it. Now we have law enforcement officers. They have no respect for other human beings, period. The only thing they respect is those above them and it's a grudging respect and the, and a grudging respect is not really respect it is not that is where the fear comes in that's where intimidation comes in you cannot respect someone if you are intimidated by them you just plain can't because respect is something that you know the only way you can get respect from someone is if you behave in a respectful manner if you speak in a respectful way if you treat others in a respectful way you will not be given respect ever ever no one ever gives you respect you earn it and nowadays they don't even bother with trying to earn it they demand it they feel it is incumbent upon you to respect them merely because they are law enforcement officers and you must do their bidding. And if you do not do their bidding, you will pay with your life. That is a very real option these days. And it's not an option you can opt for. It's their option only, which means no respect for anyone else. And that's what really bothers me with this. <clears throat> so, yeah, you know, I get where going back to that op-ed where the gal was saying it's because of fear. Joey was fearful. Joey was trying to go to a safe place. Joey was trying to go somewhere where he knew someone would help him understand what was going on. That's where Joey was headed. Joey was right outside of where he felt safe. Joey had actually called his boss and his boss was en route to meet up with him. His boss had pulled up moments after Joey had been shot. This is things that you're not going to see in the news because they don't want that in the news. They don't want you feeling sorry or feeling angry at the police, at the law enforcement officer. 
which by the way, who is on paid leave right now, pending the uh, completion of the investigation, which yeah, they're investigating themselves. Oh yeah, it's the KBI that's doing the investigating, but seriously, one law enforcement department with another. Um, okay, Chloe, I gotta, I gotta go over there and, and see exactly what you're saying here. See, and I don't necessarily, and, and this may be just a simple thing of semantics with some people. I don't, I don't give people respect. I show them respect. I do show them respect. And I show that I respect them, you know, with my behavior, with my words. But I don't, I don't give respect to people. Give is, give is implying that you don't have to do anything in order to get it. Giving is a gift as far as I'm concerned. When you give something, you are gifting someone something. And so therefore, I don't give respect to anybody. I don't gift that to them. I will treat them with respect until they do something that makes me feel as though they are no longer worthy of the respect that I offer them, that I show them. And when they know, when I feel that they are no longer worthy of what I am extending towards them, then they will no longer receive any kind of respectful behavior or words or anything from me. And respect is something that must be earned every single day, every single day, because it's like trust. You know, to me, trust can be lost that quickly. One aw shit will erase 99 attaboys. Same thing with respect. You do one thing and you can lose someone's respect, sometimes for life, depending on what it was that you did. And for me right here in this situation, I have lost all respect for the whole law enforcement community in the city of Hayes. All respect for them. I had been to the point where it was like, you know, there are certain individuals in this department that I have a real serious issue with. And the reason that I have a real serious issue with them is because they have messed with my mom a time or two, you know, with their whole, you know, you can't have that in your yard kind of bullshit coming around policing enforcing laws about yards. My mother has wildflowers growing all over her yard. People drive by and take pictures all the time because every week the colors are different because different flowers are blooming. And yet she gets harassed because she has an absolutely beautiful yard that people, you know, come by and they say, can I get seedlings? Can I come and dig up some, some bulbs? Can I, you know, she has people from out of town come by my mother's house just to get pictures of her yard because she has an absolutely beautiful, I mean, it's a wild and crazy yard, but it's gorgeous in bloom. It's, ab and she really does. She's freaking 85 years old and she's out there weeding every goddamn day, tending to her yard. She gets out there and she mows a little bit that needs to be mowed when it needs to be done. I mean, yeah, it's not a yucky yard by any stretch of the imagination, but they still give her shit about her yard. And I've had some run-ins about that shit and let them know they keep it up and I will hire an attorney. Can't freaking afford one, but I'll find one. I'll go into fucking debt up to my eyeballs just to sue their sorry asses over harassing my mom. Because that's bullshit. That's bullshit. That woman doesn't bother anybody. But hey. So I've had, you know, issues with that whole system down there for a few years anyway. 
this was just the icing on the cake. Son of a bitches. And I want to get to um, one of the articles that I had thrown in my pocket, which I have, I have shared several. Um, and see, it's, it's really starting to gain some traction now because it's now on the freethoughtproject.com as well which uh, this was shared over on uh, Justice for Joey on Facebook and uh, from the Free Thought Project. Cops kill speech-impaired autistic man trying to find safety in home for people with disabilities. Um, Joseph Weber was described by the community and his family as a person full of life and excitement. However, on Thursday, that life was taken from him by a Hayes police officer or law enforcement officer during a traffic stop last week. Weber, who had autism, was shot and killed. One shot was fired. One shot. Known to family as Joey, who is an upstanding member of the community who learned to embrace his autism, allowing him to lead a happy and mostly normal life. Joey was employed at Joe Bob's Outfitters and a member of the Knights of Columbus at his church. Um, he was also a participant at New Age Services, which provides activities and service, services to members of the community with mental disabilities. Throughout um, their Facebook page, Weber is seen participating with many different events, and the owner of New Age Services provides jobs for those with mental disabilities in his company. Joe Bob Outfitters is where uh, Joey worked. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, how could a kind, loving, and harmless man with autism, who's had no previous run-ins with police, be gunned down in cold blood? According to the county attorney, Thomas Drees, they don't know, which I graduated with Thomas's older brother, so yeah. Don't give me no shit, little Mr. Thomas. Um, I will. Yeah. Did the man threaten police? I'm not going to comment on that. Obviously, there was an escalation to the point where a shot was fired and he was killed, said Drees, as reported by KSN, which is out of Wichita. Escalated how? Uh, Joey got confused and moved on. Officer didn't realize with trying to converse with him that Joey was uh, somewhat challenged. Joey was flustered. Apparently not. According to a release from the Ellis County's attorney's office, as reported by KSN, Weber was stopped for an unknown traffic infraction and failed to obey the officer's commands. See where this is going? This has absolutely nothing to do with respect for another individual and saying, yo, do you know what you were doing? Do you, do you understand why I pulled you over? None of that kind of verbiage is obviously going on here because he failed to obey, oh yay, obey the officer's commands. As additional officers were called, he drove off and headed toward T Timber Drive, which just happens to be the street where New Age Services is located. As he was startled by the officers, it is apparent Weber tried to make it to a safe space where he knew he would be okay, where he knew someone would be able to help him understand and been, be the intermediary between him and those that were terrifying him. However, <clears throat> when he got out of the car again, according to police, he did not obey their commands. <clears throat> However, according to his family, Weber's autism has left him with very low verbal skills, which, yes, I can attest to that. And it is possible that he simply had no idea what to do, which, yeah. I mean, 
unless it had to do with dinosaurs or astronomy, there was a couple other things that Joey really excelled at. Joey found extremely fascinating, but unless it had to do with that, Joey was really, you know, very socially challenged when it came to that shit. When someone with autism is yelled at or experiences bright lights, loud noise, and highly stressful situations, they tend to break down. Yeah, they do. Weber was most likely going through this when police opened fire and he died at the scene. A woman who lives next to the New Age Services home and who witnessed some of the event said she's had interactions with Weber before and they've been pleasant. He was killed in broad daylight in front of a place that made him feel safe. The only details released by police so far have been the fact that none of the officers have body cameras and that the patrol cars may or may not have had dash cameras. Authorities remain tight-lipped on the details of Weber's death five days after he was killed. However, the, the case seems cut and dried. Weber had autism, a condition which causes high-stress situations such as a police stop to overwhelm him. Although police haven't said whether or not he was armed, because they're not going to say that because, well, duh, then there goes any kind of lame-ass excuse that they might try to come up with. It is obvious that he did not have one, as this would have been the first detail released, which, yeah, if he would have had any kind of weapon whatsoever, even if it's just a fucking letter opener or an itty-bitty little pen knife, you bet your sweet ass that would have been in the news. He had nothing on him. When he attempted to go to the only place he knew that could help him. Police, who clearly lack any training in dealing with people on the autism spectrum, killed him. Because they have no respect for other life. None. And it's really, really sad that shit comes to this. It really is. Oy. Well, Joey is looking down on us, and Joey deserves us to behave in a civilized manner. Because that's the way Joey was. I mean, he, he was a sweet kid, and he wouldn't have hurt anybody. And so... In Joey's honor, to be respectful to him and his family, I will try to maintain my composure as well as I possibly can. That's all I can promise. I will try. I will try not to become the monster that I am fighting against. It's going to be tough. Let me tell you. <sighs> yes. Um, hello, Drew. Hello, Niles. Okay. Now, I am going to get to another one that shows a total lack of respect for others. For others being able to decide what happens on their land. For others to be able to decide for themselves um, This is over on reallibertymedia.com. Thank you, Grimmy. Um, if it will wakey-wakey. 
I also have a link from uh, Blacklisted News on this and um, also on CommonDreams.org. Um, officials pull water supply as Dakota access protests swells in number and spirit. Thousands join protest camp as supporters are holding a rally in Washington, D.C. on Wednesday outside of Army Corps' hearing. The uh, Standing Rock spokesman, Stephen Sitting Bear, said he's received notifications from tribes all over the country that have caravans en route. So it's going to it's continuing to grow. The growing number and um, growing in number and spirit, the Standing Rock Sioux protest against the Dakota Access Pipeline is swiftly gaining strength ahead of a federal hearing on the controversial project. Support has spread across the country, and thousands have descended on the peaceful prayer camps in recent days, prompting state officials on Monday to remove the demonstrators' drinking water supply. Now talk about disrespect for human nature, for human um, dignity, for humanity, period. And not just humanity, for every other creature, be it plant or animal within that area you remove the drinking supply you also take it away from all animals and all plants in that area you ass munches how totally fucking disrespectful can you be how egomaniacal can you be that's just absolutely beyond the pale the North Dakota Homeland Security Director, Greg Wills, Homeland Security. Talk about homeland. We will make you as unsecure in your home as possible. Ordered the removal of the state-owned trailers and water tanks from the protest encampment. State-owned, huh? It's kind of like that uh, Ben Swan video I shared earlier today. Yeah, apparently state, federal departments filed for patents. How in the fuck can a federal department own a patent on something? How in the hell can they file for ownership of patents in the 90s? And yet the FDA, and this is for CBD, um, the, the can, cannabinoid oil for medicinal purposes, mind you. And then the FDA say there are no proven, you know, or accepted, keyword accepted, um, medicinal purposes for this. Accepted, why? They're not accepted because you're not allowing anybody to do any testing, number one, assholes. And number two, the reason you're not allowing anybody to do any testing is because you haven't figured out a way to completely corner the market yet. Assholes. But I digress. Back to North Dakota, where they're being big enough butt munches. They're doing this all despite the sweltering heat because of alleged disorderly conduct. Yeah, <clears throat> It's disorderly for you because these people in an orderly fashion are having prayer camps and ignoring your orders. This is all according to the Bismarck Tribune. People are getting overheated already, said Johnel uh, Lime Gang. Is that how you pronounce that? That's the tribe's emergency response coordinator as temperatures hover around 90 degrees Fahrenheit on Monday. This is very hurtful, and that is the intent. They intend to be hurtful. Tribal activ um, activists say that the state's response, which includes surveillance, road blockades with military checkpoints, and a state of emergency declaration, has been overly aggressive and manipulative. Why? Why? Because they wish to control the narrative. 
And it's like I said the other day, you know, you cut off the supply chain and you can really cripple a movement. And obviously that's what they're doing. They are cutting off, cutting these people off from the, from, you know, the uh, media supply chain, which is access to the media to get this story out. They're cutting off the water supply to these people, which is absolutely inhumane. Where the hell is the UN on this bullshit? Huh? Human rights violations? Huh? It's deeply ironic that the governor would release emergency funds under the guise of public health and safety, but then remove the infrastructure that helps ensure health and safety in the camp. That was Tara Hauska, National Campaigns Director for Honor the Earth. The supplies were provided last week by the North Dakota Department of Health at the tribe's request to support the roughly 2,500 people now gathered along the Standing Rock Reservation's border on the Cannonball River where the pipeline is slated to cross. Uh Uh-uh. LaDonna Allard. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Director of one of the prayer camps said that the gathering here remains 100% peaceful and ceremonial as it has from day 1. We are standing together in prayer. Why is a gathering of Indians so inherently threatening and frightening to some people? Why is it? That's what I want to know. Why are you guys terrified of a bunch of people that are just having basically a prayerful sit-in? You know, is it because you have got to lay the groundwork to make it look like they're being evil? That they're being dangerous? Sure, they're dangerous to your agenda. Why? Because they're not stooping to your level. This is nothing but repression of our growing movement to protect our water and future generations, which, hey, they have every frickin' right to. I mean, how many times did you did the government move these people to shittier and shittier ground? And now you're encroaching on their shitty ground. That's the only ground that they have. It's their home, and now you're encroaching on it and saying, well, we can do this anyway because we said so. I don't think so. The Standing Rock spokesman, Stephen Sitting Bear, said he's received notifications from tribes all over the country that have caravans en route. And it's continuing to grow. I hope they are taking them all kinds of bottled water. And if anybody is heading that direction, if you swing by my neck of the woods, I, I, I can't afford to, to head up. I, I just plain, I wish I could, but I can't. But if you swing by my neck of the woods... I can get you about a minimum of 10 flats of water, if not 20. I'll send water. But I just, I, I can't, I can't take off. Not at this point in time. If I could, I would. <sighs> On Wednesday, the high-profile activists and supporters are rallying in Washington, D.C., outside the U.S. District Court where members of the Standing Rock Sioux will argue that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers granted Energy Transfer Corporation approval for the 1,172-mile pipeline without tribal consent. In other words, well, you know, we are the Army Corps of Engineers, and we know what's, what's best, and if you don't like it, obey us. You must respect our decision. Really? Really? You have zero respect for our opinion, for our rights, as people that you kept shuttling off to more shitty and more worthless to you. Now this property is no longer worthless and you wish to use it. Wow. And so you're shuttling us off again, pushing us aside. How respectful of you. Not The tribe says that the pipeline, which will carry 570 
thousand barrels of fracked Bakken oil daily across four states to the market hub in Illinois puts the sacred waters of the Missouri River at risk, which, yeah, it does. Anybody uh, remember, oh, let's see, Gulf of Mexico? Let's look at any kind of oil spill, shall we? There's all kinds of oil spills. What's that, P. Bunyan? Numerous private outfitters who cater to situations like this. The government often contracts these people, but upon being demobilizing, they are free to do what the fuck they want. Ah, yeah, it is disgusting the way they do that shit, isn't it? <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, there you go. Casino owners. Yeah, have them contract. No, because then they are becoming the very beast that they are up against. They are becoming the monster that they're up against. Ah. Uh. And Java, I'm not really sure what you're talking about with the health care, but there is no such thing as health care in this uh, country anymore, at least not the AMA. The AMA is not health care. Uh, they are not about health care. Your doctor is not about health care. Neither is your hospital. They're not about health care. They are about dis-ease management. They wish to manage your dis-ease to be the most lucrative possible and to extend your existence on this earthly plane as long as possible so that they can milk you for as much as they can milk you. Manage your dis-ease to be profitable for them. That is what it is. It is a management business. It has nothing to do with taking care of your health. If it was about taking care of your health, then they would not get repeat customers. Because if they teach you how to take care of your health, you don't have to go back to them. Oh, water trucks and shower trucks. Oh, thank you, P. Bunyan, and food trailers. Yes. Yes, they do need to. Yes. And I would donate to that. But, you know, like I said, if, if anybody is coming by Podunkville, message me. You know, if you're, if you're coming through western Kansas, message me. I will get some water to you. You know, if nothing else, some drinking water. It's not much, but, you know, every little bit helps. I can't do a whole hell of a lot other than send supportive vibes and send water. Or if you need clothes or, you know, I can send stuff from my garden, but I have a very limited in my garden because Mother Nature kind of took out a lot of that. <sighs> Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share this link because I've gotten sidetracked so damn many times. It's like, wow. Wow. Thank you for correcting me on that, P. Bunyan. I have a tendency to get on one track and I, I don't see other options. So I appreciate it when someone else says, no, that's not what I meant. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, <coughs> excuse me again. Okay. Our disrespectful, fictitious entity known as federal government <coughs> and all of its lovely little minions and tentacles and spider webby things. E. You know, wasn't it a Lakota prophecy? That there will be a web <laughs> connecting the world. Yeah. Although I do, th I really do, I honestly and truly, and I shared a link earlier, I really think that the cabal is crumbling. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're out of the woods. That just means that that they're, go they're getting desperate now and they're getting much more dangerous now. And we need to be more on our toes. And we need to be more on the... Let's don't fall into their mindset kind of thing. Because that makes us no better than them. Yes, I understand. Sometimes you do have to 
confront violence with violence. I get that. Sometimes you need to have an equal and opposing force, or maybe not equal, but an opposing force. But it's kind of like, uh, what was it, the Revolutionary War? Don't shoot until you see the whites of their eyes kind of thing. Please, maintain your cool, maintain your composure. Do not be goaded into doing something that all of us will regret. Please. <sighs> okay. Let's see. I have a notification over here. Hi, Mary B. Thank you, my dear. Um, I'll put this over on Fakie Book as well. Okay. I'm still getting used to my new roller ball. <laughs> you would think I would, you know, not be, but it's it's not necessarily the roller ball itself because I'm used to that. It's just the buttons are positioned a little bit differently on the side. So trying to, <laughs> I'm still trying to get used to that. So sometimes it takes me a little bit longer. Um, let's see. How do I wish to? There we go. Got that on Fakie Book. So, let's see, what else is going on over here? I have not been paying attention to the chat much at all. Um, oh, that's why you got so many kids. <laughs> Ah, okay, now see, Chloe, there are individuals that, yes, individuals in the system, but the system itself is not. But yeah, there are individuals that are about patient care and about your health and advocating for your health, but the system is not. And there are entirely too many doctors, and see, that's that's the big difference I see between nurses and doctors. <clears throat> I have several nurses in my family. And the nurses are the ones that are about patient care. Whereas the doctors, uh-uh. No, they're not. Doctors are about disease management. So, um which is based, they are part of the system for the most part. Now you can't say all of them are because my personal doctor, although yeah, she has a tendency to fall that way, but, um, I have a tendency to straighten her out right afterwards and tell her, uh, no, which I agreed to one more physical in October. I am going in October to prove to her that I don't need her prescriptions that I don't need big pharma. I will take care of myself. And then I will tell her, I love you dearly. And when I see you on the street or in the grocery store, we will converse. And if you wish to be friends on Facebook, or if you wish to have exchange emails, great, but you won't be seeing me in here again, unless something were to happen that I cannot manage on my own. And trust me, I, w I have lots of other avenues to, uh, check out before I go to the doctor again. So, yeah, I, ha I have sisters and sister-in-laws and aunts and that kind of stuff. Lots of nurses, um, which I think the nurses are the caregivers. I don't, I don't believe doctors are. I really don't. Most doctors are not. Once again, being kind of using that big old brush to brush them all, but there are always exceptions to every rule. But hey there, Iota, how you doing? School teachers and doctors, yeah, okay. Now I do know some school teachers that are pretty freaking awesome people, but I also know some school teachers that are once I get tenure kiss my ass I'm not going to do any 
thing over and above. I have had, what was that movie with Nick Nolte? Teachers? The Crazy Guy? Um, Richard Mullins, is that what his name was in real life? Hola, Iota! Um, you know, the, the, uh, the history teacher that had you reenacting things. I had a history teacher like that in high school. Absolutely amazing. I had several absolutely amazing teachers in high school. I had some really amazing teachers in uh, middle school. And I had some absolutely ass holiness teachers in middle school and in high school. So, you know, each it's that's another one of those things where you can't take that great big brush and paint them all because there are always exceptions to every rule. And although I will say there are an awful lot of them that suck. Oh, just dropping in to say yo. Well, yo, yo. I o ta. <laughs> yeah. Hey there, Java. Oh, your sister and niece are teachers? Cool. I really do know some, some very good teachers. And uh, some of the kids that um, graduated with my daughters are teachers. And they are very good teachers as well. Oh, hell to deal with as landowners? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I know some that are like that. Yeah. So... You know, it takes all kinds, but it's 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 the icky ones, that bad apple that always sticks in your head. Doesn't make any difference how many good ones you know. There's always that bad apple that makes you go, yeah, that asshole. That, yeah, which those are the ones that taint the whole bunch. Hence the saying, one bad apple will spoil the whole bunch. Yeah. And yes, Java, they do believe they know it all. Um... And I have a nephew that is one of the first ones, and he's he's got his bachelor's degree um, in engineering, I believe, out of K-State. And he said that he is so glad that he, he got his degree and got the hell out because that piece of paper helps him get a better paying job. And uh, no, he has no student loan. He worked his way through and he got scholarships. So smart kid. But he said most, most of college is regurgitation of what they feed you. So he has very little use for the whole actual college process. Because he said a lot of it is, um, yeah, regurgitation. But that's how you get through is, is you have to be very good at regurgitating the BS that they feed you. But... Um, you know, that's kind of the way it is with a lot of things. Hell, I tell you what, the people I deal with on the corporate level, oy, which I'll just go there because, man, Monday was a day. It really was. It was like, wee. Um, I think this was Monday. Let me double check it here. Okay, so, yeah, my Monday morning, I got to share this with you guys. I shared it with Circles earlier, which Circles is one of those people that, you know, she's, she's with this whole talking about respect and stuff. There are very few people outside of my family that just automatically, I, I just trust and respect implicitly. Circles, Grammy, Cowboy Tech, um... Let's see. Uh, yes, Lou. <laughs> you know, there are certain individuals that, that over the years, I just, I am comfortable. And those are people that I know they will not screw me over. I just know it. And they have my utmost respect and trust. And this is aside from my family. And then there are other people, but, you know, those are the ones cybernetic-wise that just, just off the top of my head, there's lots of them, but those are the ones off the top of my head. <clears throat> but I was talking with Circles Monday, and I had to tell her about my day, just to let you know how asinine some of this stuff is. 
my day with corporate Monday morning I got a no notification from corporate that they wanted a part returned which I do warranty claims for a Chevrolet dealership so uh, it's usually done for testing purposes and normally not a big deal but today isn't normal which okay normal for me it's not normal for a lot of people just putting that out there so corporate was asking me to return the engine coolant that had leaked out of a vehicle <clears throat> And if I did not get it returned within a two-week time frame, they were going to debit our warranty account. Now, let me repeat this. Corporate wanted me to return engine coolant that had leaked out of a vehicle. Needless to say, or, you know, at least for thinking individuals, I am unable to return a fluid that has leaked out of a vehicle over several miles. I'm good at my job, but I'm not that good at it. So, <clears throat> I called the parts return center to explain the issue with, uh, you know, that I have with their request. Had to leave a message because there are no humans that answer their phone. I got a call back telling me to uh, call a num another number to request a special return or a part return special waiver. So I called that number and was on hold for 40 plus minutes. But my call was important to them. Please stay on the line and an agent will be with you as soon as possible. So yeah, an agent. I love that terminology, don't you? When someone finally answered my call, I explained the situation to them and was promptly told that I had called the wrong number and that I should have called so-and-so. Are you starting to see how my Monday went? So, when I said, uh, this is the number that I was given by the parts return center, he said, well, uh, yes, you do have to call us first, but so-and-so is who you should be, is who should be taking care of this. So I asked, should I call so-and-so now? And he said, oh no, I can handle it for you. Now, in case you're wondering, I have to deal with this kind of mentality at least once a week. So, and depending on, I prefer it to be a Wednesday or a Thursday, but when my week starts out like that, I have tilt flashing across my forehead for the rest of the week. So, just putting that out there. <sighs> In any case, by the end of the phone call, he did grant me that special waiver. So I don't have to uh, try to return a fluid that has leaked out of a vehicle all over the countryside. It wasn't that special of them. You know, you really just can't make this shit up. You really can't. And so that's the way my week started. You know, just to kind of yeah. Oy. Okay, what are y'all talking about here? Um, what? I have a crazy ass personality that causes them to talk down to everyone. Oh, you know, there's an awful lot of people that I know that are like that. Talk down to people. And it's like, sweetheart, you know, you keep looking down your nose at people like that. When a rainstorm comes up, you're going to drown. Just saying. Okay. What's this? Okay. I have no idea what you guys are talking about, so I'm going to move along. <laughs> other than psychologists and all that other fun shit. So... Um, let's go to another one where there is a total disrespect, disconnect from the actual meaning of respect. How about we go here? This is from activistpost.com. Now, granted, uh, over the last few years, I have developed less and less use for this pretty little colorful piece of cloth 
or not so pretty. I mean, there's a lot of countries that have a prettier piece of cloth than we do, but, eh, you know, I'm not going to go and fight them because their piece of cloth is prettier than mine. So, activistpost.com. Vietnam vet arrested for hanging U.S. flag upside down to protest eminent domain. Really? Huh. I did not know that that was, uh, that, you know, flying the flag in a manner to let you know that, uh, yeah, we are in trouble. You know, that's a sign of distress. Homer Martz, who is a 63-year-old Vietnam veteran who's never committed a crime, he is so dedicated to protecting and practicing his rights that he stood up for the rights of people to protest the Vietnam War uh, even after they spat on him. So when Homer Martz is arrested for doing nothing other than practicing the very rights he stands to protect and the flag that ostensibly represents them, something has gone awry. Last week, Martz attempted to practice the very rights that the United States government claims its military protects. Okay, that's the claim they make to get you to take up arms and go over and kill people over there. You know, because those people over there are a danger to your rights over here. I'm still trying to grasp that concept. Those people over there are a danger to your rights over here. All righty. And for this, he was arrested for hanging a flag upside down on his own property. Homer Martz was kidnapped by state agents and charged with a crime. Hanging the flag upside down is an international symbol of distress. Martz was voicing his distress after the government had violated his property rights, ding, 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 at the behest of big oil, ding, 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 without his consent. Ah, I am shocked. That's through their process of eminent domain. Um, we're going to take your domain imminently. Well, oh, wait, no, we've already taken it because we need it imminently. We need it now. And we deem our need much more important than yours because the need of the many, the many money grubber asshat leeches way outweigh the needs of the few or that one stubborn individual that actually believes that our rights are there for a reason and they are not something that can be taken away because they're just ours because of virtue of being born kind of thing. Yeah. Martz was told that he'd have to accept a portion of the 1,134-mile oil pipeline built by Texas-based Dakota Access LLC. The line would go right through the middle of his property between his home and his water well. Oh, wonderful. All Martz asked was that the company move the pipeline 150 feet over to avoid potential danger of interfering with his water supply. But he was denied. And, sweetheart, I got to clue you in. Uh, even moving it 150 feet away, if you have a leak, it's going to interfere with your water supply. It just is. Martz didn't grab an AR-15 and go shoot up a crowd. He didn't even make a sign and protest City Hall. Instead, you know, he he's not one of those crazy people that goes, Please, sir, please don't hit me with that whip again. Or if you do, make it a wet noodle if you're going to whip me. No, he didn't make any kind of asinine moves like that. Instead, this innocent man chose to make a statement at his own house. He was making a difference in his life changing the world by changing his own, by standing his ground and making his statement. 
he hung his American flag upside down under a Chinese flag and wrote the following statement on his flagpole. In China, there is no freedom, no protesting, no due process. In Iowa, question mark. In America, question mark. At about 11 o'clock, two Calhoun County sheriffs walked up to my door, Martz told the messenger last week. <sighs> One of the officers was carrying his two flags. They said, you can't do this. We have a statute, which, uh, excuse me, but a statute is not a law. Seriously, look it up. A statute is not a law. I said, I'm sorry, but you shouldn't have took them down. So I walked back out and I put them back up. And they arrested me. Why? Because not only are they law enforcement officers, they are statute enforcement officers. They are ordinance enforcement officers. You know, the reason why there's different uh, terminology is because they really do mean different things. Just putting that out there. It's under the color of, though, that's sweeping the color of. Mm. These brave public servants knew that they were doing wrong, but they were blindless zombies, mindless zombies. They didn't make, uh, they don't make laws. They just enforce them. Yeah. Why? Well, I'm just doing my job. So they, here is that lovely little moral quandary again. Which one is more immoral? The one who gives the immoral order or the one who actually enforces it or follows it? I know my answer. Under an Iowa statute, desecration of the flag is a simple misdemeanor, said the Cal Calhoun County attorney, Tina Meth Farrington, after Martz's arrest. If convicted, Martz could be fined and face up to 30 days in jail. I'm thinking cha-ching! Iowa Code. Now, wait a minute. Iowa Code. This is a code now. There's some more verbiage for you. These lovely little distinctions all over the place. 718A makes it a misdemeanor to publicly mutilate, deface, defile, or defy, trample upon, cast a contempt upon. How do you cast contempt upon? Do you have to have a fishing rod to do that? Satirize, deride, or burlesque. Burlesque. How, how do you burlesque a flag? Do you do a striptease with it? Do you drape yourself in it and slowly remove it? Is that how you burlesque a flag? I'm curious. I, I get how you could satirize one. Oh, you can't do this either by words or act, by the way. Uh, such flag, standard color, insignia, shield, or other insignia of the United States or flag... Ensign or ensign, great seal or other insignia of this state, among other things. There's that lovely little all encompassing, among other things, you know, so that they can go. That's covered under the among other things. That's that's a fine print shit that they don't necessarily stipulate, but when they nail your ass, they go, Oh, we covered that in among other things. Good thing you can't see my eyes rolling. The good news is that these tyrants finally realized that they were breaking federal law, which really, they were violating the Constitution is what they were doing, by arresting Martz. In 2014, Iowa ruled the very law that they used to arrest Martz unconstitutional. However, they never repealed it. You know, I'm thinking, why do you need to repeal something if it's been uh, deemed unconstitutional? I know how that whole shit works. I used to be on city council. 
But I'm thinking, why should you have to repeal something? Once it's deemed unconstitutional, it's like null and void. Is it not? Or it should be. It should be, oops, our bad. Well, that's null and void. Expunge that. Apparently, Meth Farrington says sheriff's deputies who charged Martz weren't aware courts had struck down the law. She called on lawmakers to repeal it immediately. Oh, please, please repeal this immediately. In the meantime, we're going to harass a few more people because we can. Yeah, this is so that other citizens and law enforcement are not caught in this type of situation again. Note, law enforcement. Now, it's citizens, which means you belong to that area, and law enforcement, which means those that hoover over you with their shiny badge and their firearms and their batons and their flashlights. And they will either beat you or shoot you if you do not behave like a good little citizen. On Monday, all charges against Martz were dropped. Well, well, how fun. Last month, we reported on a man in central Pennsylvania who was also kidnapped by police and deprived of his rights for doing nothing more than hanging an American flag upside down on his own property. Joshua Brubaker has since settled a civil rights lawsuit against the city for more than $55,000. Okay, part of me goes, Booyah! Bravo! Nail their sorry ass! And part of me goes, Fuck! Taxpayer's dime. Paying for ass munches. We get to pay no matter how shit works out. Ain't it great? That's why I think we all just need to quit paying. Just stop it. Stop. Uh. In a famous Supreme Court case of Texas versus Johnson in 1989, a five justice majority ruled that desecration or desecrating the American flag was protected speech under the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Now, I am of a mind anymore that it's a piece of cloth. <clears throat> and yes, a lot of people attach meaning to that piece of cloth. And hey, you know, if that's the way you roll, that's the way you roll. <coughs> to me, it's just another control mechanism. It is a piece of cloth that they use to control you. And the sooner you get out of that mindset <coughs> and stop looking at that as something that is to be saluted, because it, it, it is an inanimate object. Yes, it's a symbol. But I think it's a symbol that we really need to outgrow because it's become a control mechanism. If it hadn't al already been, if it hadn't always been a control mechanism. <coughs> Excuse me. Despite this ruling... Americans from sea to shining sea continue to call for the arrest or even death of those who dare express their opinion through the use of the old glory. Now, First Amendment, I understand. The First Amendment is there not to protect the speech that you agree with, not even to protect the speech that you, you know, disagree with or that you just go, let's agree to disagree kind of thing. It's there to protect the speech that you vehemently disagree with, that you would just as soon cut your tongue out as to repeat what they said. That's what it's there to protect. And the reason it's there to protect that is because there is somebody else in this world that feels the same way about your opinion. And if you don't want your opinion silenced, then by God, you got to allow others to express theirs. That is a God, whether you believe in God or not, that is a natural right by virtue of you being born and being able to express yourself. That is a natural right that cannot be taken away. 
It can be acquiesced, but it cannot be taken away. What was that, P. Bunyan? Um... Oh, thank you very much. Weaponized earth. I read something about that uh, a little bit of, or earlier today, Grimmy. Uh, was that you that just posted that, hon? Yeah, weaponized earthquake hits near Rome. Uh, so I don't even remember where in the heck it was now. Someone had said... Um, that the difference between a natural earthquake and a weapons grade earthquake is that natural ones have aftershocks <laughs> and I thought wow I'm gonna have to start paying a little bit more attention now hmm okay P. Bunyan I will get to that oh, holy shit I'm just about out of time damn this day hour has gone fast okay I gotta get back to this one though real quick the very essence of freedom is tolerating peaceful forms of expression. Which I'm not really crazy about the whole verbiage tolerating because although I don't agree with Pendulette all of the time, I do agree with this assessment of the meaning of tolerating. Tolerating is kind of a condescending kind of thing. Oh, I'm going to tolerate you doing that. Like I'm going to look down on you. I, hmm... It's one of those things that you just flat ass got to freaking deal with. You know, if you want people to have to deal with your opinion, so long as you are not aggressing against them, so long as you're not being violent, then you got to deal with their shit as well. So long as there is no harm, no foul. And har by harm, I mean actual physical harm. Not this, eh, I have an emotional boo-boo harm. <sighs> Sadly missing the point, however, are folks who fail to understand that burning or desecrating a flag without fear of punishment from one's government is what liberty is all about, which, yeah, it is. And there we go again. There's that whole, you must respect. We demand respect. We command respect. And you do not get respect when you demand, command, say it must be, you get acquiescence. You get someone that is intimidated by you. And intimidation is only intimidation if fear figures in. So people are not giving you grudging respect. They are not respecting you because you are demanding it. You are intimidating them, which means they are reacting in fear. And fear does not have a respectful component, period. There is no respect where there is fear involved. None. Fear is a very base, very base reaction. Fear is in the reptilian mind, which all of you people that say we are being ruled by reptiles... You know, and you keep saying, look, their reptilian essence is showing. When their reptilian essence is showing, that's when they are constantly react out of fight or flight mode. That is the reptilian mind. That is the base part of the mind. That is the mind that works on instinct. That is the m part of the mind that is constantly grasping at everything because you're either fighting or you're running. And if you're fighting, you're grasping at or you're f pushing against. Also in the reptilian mind is the greed component. So that's where we, yes, we are ruled by, rep, by reptilian mindset, by the reptiles. But that's because these people have not advanced past the reptilian mind. They are still in that base mind. That gimme, 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 grab, grab, control, control, punish, punish. That is a reptilian mindset. Oh, well, to go on with this. When a society becomes more concerned with a piece of cloth than the freedom it is meant to represent, 
It's time to wake up and nothing can represent you. Do you realize that when you ask someone to represent you, you are asking them to present you as, you know, they step forward and present themselves as you, which is represent. They are presenting themselves as you or for you. That's kind of a crazy concept, don't you think? Nothing can really represent you. You present yourself. As a former member of the USMC, I am unoffended when I see uh, flags set ablaze or stepped on or upside down because I see it as an act of expression by a group who feel oppressed, which they need to and when you see something like that you need to go up and you need to ask them in a non-aggressive way go up to them and say so why are you doing this and try to interact with them because really the only way you can straighten this shit out is to interact in a non-aggressive manner if they are aggressive with you then you back up and you say hey dude seriously if that's the way you want to play, I'm stepping back. You just play your little game over there. I'm going to ignore you, which is an act, uh, basically an act of disregarding or shall we say disrespecting. But is a, it is a reaction to the initial disrespect or aggression coming at you. So see, you get what you give. If you give out disrespectful or aggressive behavior, you're going to get that back. Or if you put out, because giving, mm -hmm. okay, to me, giving is like there are no strings attached. There is, it's just, it's just freely done. Just, fr and yeah, whatever. That's a whole other mindset. In any case, to finish this up, throughout history, the patriotic majority has been responsible for most of the atrocities committed against our fellow humans. Only because of a handful of irate, freedom-loving individuals unafraid to challenge the status quo do we have any semblance of liberty in America today. A true patriot is never a member of the majority who calls for their opposition to be silenced with state force because of their views are offensive. No, a true patriot is the one who refuses to be intimidated in the face of this violently obstinate collective. And you know what? This collective that's out there right now that is saying you must be politically correct. You cannot say certain things because they can be misconstrued as hurtful. My words are my words. I have zero control as to how you construe them. Zero. Um, now you guys are talking about pizza? What the hell? Y'all got me totally confused over there. Okay. Just a minute. Let me see what's going on over here on that F and site. Crap. I got 19 minutes left. Jeepers, time flies. And, you know, I've probably had people, you know, say, you know, you're speaking out about this as being disrespectful to whether it be shitlery or the Trumple Silskin or the United States government, which how how can you respect a fictitious entity? That's my question. Hi, Bo Diddy. Hi, Bobby. I'd like to know, how do you respect a fictional thing or a mass delusion? How, how can you even put forth that it is deserving of respect? 
Those are questions I would really like to have answered. I want someone to explain to me logically how they deem it necessary to respect something that is a mass delusion, that is a fiction. How? Why? Those are very important questions, I think. And I think that I am being extremely respectful that I care enough to point it out when somebody is fucking up with this shit. Because I really do. If, if I didn't care, I wouldn't point this shit out. But I do care. And the reason that I care is because I do not want to have goose stepping going on outside my door. I don't want goose stepping going on outside my kids' door or my grandkids' door. And quite frankly, I don't want goose stepping going on outside of anyone on this planet's door. Therefore, I open my trap and I say, bullshit. I call bullshit on this. There is no inherent right for a government to be oppressive, to goose step, to tell me what I can and cannot do with my property, to tell me what I can and cannot purchase with my money, to tell me what I can and cannot put inside my own body. There is no right. Fictitious. Hi, TD. How you doing, sweetheart? Fictional entities. Just because an A massive amount of people believe in it doesn't mean that they're true. Doesn't mean that they're real. It's called a mass delusion for a reason. You know, I could sit there and watch David Copperfield make make it look like an elephant disappeared. And I could be standing there with 20,000 other people and watch him make it look like an elephant disappeared. The elephant didn't really disappear, though. It's called sleight of hand. It's called magic for a reason. It's called magic. Fuck you. That's what it's called. And that's what government is. Magic. Fuck you. Sleight of hand. Fuck you. You didn't feel me in there pulling all that shit out of your pocket, did you? You don't need all that money. Let me just take about half of that away from you because I got shit. I got cronies that I got to share it with because they give me toys so that I can oppress you even further. Ain't it great? No, it ain't. Stop believing in that fictitious shit. I have lots of fiction downstairs. Trust me, I've read lots of fiction. I know fiction when I see it. I have learned to recognize it. Yeah. And I've learned to recognize really bad fiction as well. And I still have some books downstairs that are very bad fiction. And the reason I keep them around is so I can go, you see this? I bet you you can't make it five pages into it without going, fuck this shit. Bad fiction. This is bad fiction. Everyone needs to have an example of what bad fiction is so that you can go and find beneficial fiction and go, or good fiction, fiction that makes you think outside of the box, fiction that takes you on a story somewhere. Mm. What's that, PB? Um... (laughs) oh pb but you are a sweetheart you know that's that's one thing people don't really understand when i call you sweetheart when i call you hun when i call you darling i truly do mean that if i call you a name i mean that name so if i call you butt munch then i mean to call you a butt munch Note I haven't called you a butt munch. (laughs) There are only certain people that get that designation. But you are a sweetheart, honey. And then when you're not, I will let you know. Okay? Deal? (laughs) Oh, I 
love everybody. I really do. I don't like y'all. <laughs> but I love y'all. Because I know you're here for a reason. I know you're here. If not to teach me a lesson, then you're here to teach someone else a lesson or to learn a lesson yourself. Everything is here for a reason. I, I, I know that. I feel that in my gut. So I got to respect that. I got to respect the fact that everything is here for a reason or it wouldn't be here. If there wasn't a reason, it wouldn't be here. That's just simple Occam's razor kind of logic. But, um, or my twisted kind of logic, however you want to look at that. Uh, <laughs> oh, Bobby and TD are having a hell of a convo over here in the shout box on the FN. Um, I'm glad you guys had a day, <laughs> a good day even. That's always a good thing. Um, but um, where was I? Squirrel! <laughs> I'm so glad it's close to the end. Because, yeah, I got a rumbly in my tumbly, and my brain is going off in left field really easily now. Um, pretty soon it'll go over to right field because, well, I can't just hang out on one side without going to check out the other side. So... Um, let's see. Where am I at? Yeah, I want to do this one. Uh, oh no. Yeah, I want to do that one. Yeah, because this is a stinking pile of poo is what it is. And see, there's another thing. You know, sometimes things can be a stinking pile of poo and sometimes that pile of poo is fertilizer. So, you know, it just depends on how you look at it. Or if you are the one that is spreading the manure, or if you're the one that's getting the manure dumped on you. You know, and some people actually want the manure dumped on them because it will help next growing season. And some people are going, really, seriously, I did not need this shit right now. So, you know, there's, always, there's so many different ways of seeing things and looking at things. It's quite entertaining sometimes. Okay, I'm going to get to this one that PB shared real quick. This is, wow, from April of 2004. Man goes to jail for putting a sign in his yard. Ah. Sign, sign, everywhere, sign. You know, Grimmy, I haven't sang to you yet. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> That's the extent of it. That's all I'm going to inflict you with today, dear. <clears throat> I really, really, really seriously thought about doing my Marilyn Monroe impersonation, but then I thought, no, I did that last year, and I did it really badly, so I'm not going to go there again. So, <laughs> back to this article. Um, you can look through them all. Up to his ears in legal documents, Philip Dean is fed up with the judicial system. It's a system. That should be enough right there to let you know, shit. Uh, that's the kind of court system we've got in Jackson County, Alabama. And I want everyone to know, says Dean. So, he put a sign in his front lawn saying, Our court system is a joke. A message that landed in behind bars. But wh why? I was in a cell about four foot wide and six foot long and nothing in it but a toilet. Arrest orders signed by Judge um, Harrelson claimed that Dean to be in direct contempt of court, even though the sign is on a county, county road 107. <laughs> oh, Graham. <laughs> um, Okay, even though the sign is on County Road 107, not in the county courthouse, the signs were so derogatory to the court, they could not be ignored. Harrelson responds to a lo in a local newspaper, Really? You had to actually drive by his property in order to see it. So you went out of your way? Unless you are a next-door neighbor, you went out of your way to see this sign that was so derogatory even way back in 2004 that you got a knicker knot, a thong knot so far up your ass that the only idea you had was a shitty one? And with that, Dean got locked up and the signs were removed. Well... <laughs> 
Mr. Pella Belly, which, by the way, a Pella Belly is someone that has their head so far up their ass that they had to have a window pane installed in their stomach just to be able to see where they're going. Before they would let me go in front of Judge Har uh, Harrelson, Dean says, they put leg shackles, they put handcuffs, they put chains from my legs to my waist, they put a chain around my waist, they put chains from my waist up here and had my hands pulled up like this. And I don't know how his hands were pulled up, but the, he's explaining this. With an apology, Harrelson released Dean after a day in jail, but the experience leaves Dean with unanswered questions. When it gets to where a man hadn't got any free speech in this world, what has he got? Answers he hopes to find with the message already back in place, which yay, yay. I hope that sign stays in his yard. And yeah, what have you got if you cannot express yourself? That's just, wow. Hmm. Oh, he lives in BFE? So, in other words, you had to make a concerted effort to go way over yonder. Hey there, RLM89245. Let's see. Uh, 103811. RLM11 or RLM2, if you want to break it down all the way down. Hey there, sweetheart. How you doing? Um, let's see. Yeah, all of this under color of law. Yay! Wow. Okay. Okay, Iota, what's this? Uh, tackleberries at harassy old vet have been trained to follow orders. Yes, they have. They are very good little lap puppies, aren't they? And you know what? If you don't pay attention, if you're not really careful, they may get so excited they'll hump your leg. But I digress. Um, when they deem all us fugitive slaves, those tackleberries will probably gladly follow orders since they were willing to harass the old vet already for something like hanging the flag upside down. Yeah, tackleberries. Well, that's a really nice way of putting it. I prefer to call them dangleberries because, yeah, they're those little clingy shits that you, you try wiping them off and sometimes you just plain have to get a bidet. <laughs> and I'm thinking there's an awful lot of dangleberries in this world. And I think we need to have a collective bidet done. And then we need to have Roto-Rooter come and clean out that sewer system because, you know, a bunch of those dangleberries are going to be floaters. And you need to have a really good flush in order to get those bad boys to go down. So, guess what, y'all? I am out of time. Wow, this evening has gone really fast. It has been a totally whacked kind of wackadoodle Wednesday. Not necessarily in a fun way. But, you know, every day can't all be a bed of roses. And sometimes it can be a bed of roses. It's just that that bed of roses was just freshly fertilized with natural fertilizer. So, you know, ha! sometimes you just got to plug your nose and trudge through it anyway. <laughs> and so that's what I did. I plugged my nose, I waded through it, and unfortunately, or fortunately, however you wish to look at it, I dragged you along with me. <laughs> Y'all have been listening to Grammy's Rocketeer here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 3. Also, the, uh, what is that, RLM, XYZ, what is that, how's that, what's that link, Grim? Let me scroll down. RLMRadio.xyz. Um, also on RLM Radio, um, the TuneIn channel, or the TuneIn Radio RLM station, the Internet Radio station, also on the Real RLM Spreaker channel, which was formerly the WorldTruth.org Spreaker channel, but now it's RLM, which is still the same thing, only different, because, yeah, I signed over WorldTruth.org to Bo Diddy, so, hey, still same thing, only different. 
less hassle for me. <laughs> Just putting that out there. So thank you everybody for listening in this evening. And for my disjointed ramblings and ravings, I truly do appreciate you hanging in there with me. I will be back Friday evening for the Freaker Friday edition of Grammy's Rocket Chair. And following me on Freaker Friday will be Grimner and Moose Girl with the Freaker's Ball. I don't know if Atrax is going to show up in between time or not, but if he does, booyah, you'll have some tunage by Atrax uh, for that time frame between myself and the Freaker's Ball on Friday. Y'all have an absolutely wonderful, splendiferous, wackadoodle rest of your day and uh, i hope tomorrow is equally awesome and splendiferous and uh, 